Calling someone and it's taking a little longer for the other end to pick up? That's because they're being entertained by the Singing Karma Chameleon Telephone. Call me again, call me again. Finally, the Singing Karma Chameleon Telephone is now available right here in the United States. Each time the phone rings, it's music to your ears. You know the song, it's the smash hit Karma Chameleon by Boy George and Culture Club, performed by none other than a singing chameleon and a ladybug. This is so cute. Get rid of your boring phone and let the Karma Chameleon telephone brighten up your calls every time it rings. The chameleon rolls his eyes, stands up, sings and dances as red, gold and green lights flash on its chest to match the lyrics of the hit song while the ladybug plays the harmonica. Cactus, 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 cactus. Cactus ELA Radio. Cactus. 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 PLA Incorporated. Cactus. 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 PLA Radio. Cactus. 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 of America. A few years ago, I made a video of myself answering the phones at Walmart so I could be a big jerk to all the Black Friday shoppers. Um, today's Black Friday for you guys, right? That's racist, hey. ma'am. You may remember those calls from PLA Radio episode number 21. I tried that same trick again last year, only to discover that Walmart's removed all of the customer accessible phones at the stores near me, which I'm going to pretend that they did because of me. So this year I did things differently. I noticed that Target stores use regular cordless phones to answer their phone calls in several departments such as electronics. And most locations use the same model of cordless phone, which is a Uniden model D1660, the same model of cordless phone that they currently sell in their stores. I got this information by calling every Target store in my area and convincing employees to give me the model numbers of their cordless phones. Electronics, this is Ryan, how can I help you? Hello, this is Paul from the home office with Target in Minnesota. Uh, we're we're going to be upgrading the phone systems there soon. Uh, I'm needed to find out what kind of cordless phones you're using behind the electronics counter right now. Um, yeah, give me one second. Sure. We're using a Unidyne Dex 6.0. A Unidyne? Um, do you know which model number it is? Uh, let me see if I can find it in here. It's probably under the battery cover. Okay, I think I have it. Uh, D1660. Oh, okay, so it's a Unidyne D1660? Yes. Great. Okay, that's all I need. We're just getting ready to upgrade, so I was just needed to check on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Goodbye. So I purchased a unit in cordless phone for around $18, and then me and Evie walked up to the photo department and convinced them to register our cordless handset into their base. This is done by setting the cordless phone handset into a base unit at the store and leaving it there for about one minute. We accomplished this by telling the lady at the photo department that the cordless phone we purchased wasn't working correctly, and electronics told us to come over and test it in their base. It was a stupid story, but the lady at the photo department was happy to help us out. After about a minute of talking to her non-stop about mundane things so she wouldn't have time to figure out she's doing a really stupid thing, my own cordless handset was a part of this Target store's phone network. Here's the first call we were able to answer. Hello, who are you yes. calling for? Hello? Hello? Yes, who's this? Hi, my name is Liz. I was actually calling because we bought a stroller there last night. It was one of the strollers that we've registered for. Yes. And... So we dropped the 10% off, um, and when I talked to her, she had told me that it, the box would be the exact same as the display, which was cream, mm -hmm. and uh, I asked her a few times, because uh, on the box it had a, a blue picture, and she said, no, no, it will be cream just like the display, um, but we got home and it's blue. Oh my god. And, oh my god. Yeah. So, um, I'm wondering, I guess, how you, we you... go about... Ma'am, do you really think your baby gives a shit what color the stroller is? The baby doesn't care. The baby does not care what color the stroller is. You're being ridiculous. You're being a typical... Are you, are you kidding me right now? Are you, are you, do you seriously work for Target, or is this a joke? Yeah, I'm the LOD here at Target. I'm just saying that the baby... It, it's a baby stroller, and you're only going to be using it for a year or two. So, get over it. What, it's, it's what just, is your name? My name is Kevin Minnick. 
Oh my goodness, I am blown away right now. Um, okay, well, you're, you're, you're not you're, you're not I'll used to the higher management then. My goodness, they're gonna, they're gonna tell right. you, they're gonna tell you the same thing that you're being ridiculous and the baby does not give a shit. It's just a stroller. It's just a baby. You need to watch your language. Your baby is not special. You need. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm blown away, honestly. You know, there's starving kids in third world countries. I would like to know who your supervisor is. I will hang up if you don't give me that number. Okay, let me get that. But while I'm okay. looking it up. There's starving kids out there, and you're complaining about the color of your stroller. Do you know how selfish that is? Do you know how Are you going to give me this people yeah, I, I'm number look- once that I hang up? I'm looking it up right now. Hey, Arthur, I'm going to talk to you face to face right now. If you talk to my wife like this, I'm coming to him. Hey, listen to the family right now. Bring me back to my wife like this. You never talk to my fucking baby. What are you doing right now? I'm coming to the fucking guy there. Where are you? Sir? Hello? I got the number here. It turns out that these unit and cordless phones have awesome range. We can go anywhere in the store with it, and even more importantly, we can take it outside and answer customer calls from the parking lot. A few years ago, when I was picking up calls in Walmart, I was constantly getting busted by Walmart employees for being on their phones. But with our own personal extension phone, we just pull into a parking space near the store and start taking calls for hours with no chance of interference from employees. This is Electronics. Can I help you? Hi, I'm wondering if you have any of the Nikon cameras that are on sale for half price for the ninety nine ninety nine. No, it looks like I, I've set a bunch aside for myself. I'm going to buy them when I get my paycheck, and I'm hoarding them because it's such a good deal. I can sell them on eBay, so that it doesn't look like there's any left for you. You don't have a single one? Well, we have a bunch, but I've set them all aside for myself because I'm going to sell them on eBay because I get a better price that way. I mean, like I make money. Are you serious? Yes. So, sorry about okay. that. Sorry. All right. Well, you don't have to be a jerk about it. At Walmart, I had to walk around the store and listen for an employee to page a certain department to pick up a phone line on the overhead paging system so that I could intercept their call. At Target, employees talk to each other through walkie-talkies, usually using headsets so customers can't hear anything. But by using an ordinary police scanner, I can monitor the frequencies that Target employees use to communicate with each other. Can I get two backups to the front lanes, please? I'm right here. I can back up. Where do you want me? I was able to find their frequencies by calling Target and asking what model of Motorola walkie-talkies they were using. Then I googled the model number to find out which frequency range I should scan in. Hello, sir. Can I help you with something? Hi. I was just wondering if the photos for Vic were ready. We had a problem with those. Um, okay. Basically, the kids were ugly, so we ripped them up and threw them away. We, we don't want to do business with you. Okay. Wait, what? The kids in the pictures were kind of... The kids in the pictures were ugly. You're serious. But have a nice day anyway, and uh, Merry Christmas. The only problem with taking calls from Target is that Target doesn't put calls on hold the same way that Walmart used to. The phone operator at Target will usually radio the customer's question to the appropriate department and then help the customer herself. This means that the calls aren't actually on hold and I can't pick them up with my extension phone. I usually have to wait for a customer to have a more complex question so that they have to be put on hold for a department to pick up. There probably is a way for me to hijack phone calls from the operator or to pick up the store's phone as it's initially ringing, but I know very little about their phone system so I don't know how to do these things. One advantage I did have though was that these unit and cordless phones will let me pick up and eavesdrop on an employee talking to a customer as long as they're using the same cordless base station that I am. How can I help you? I'm calling to see if you guys have any of the uh, hot sauce samplers left. Can you say that item one more time, please? It's a hot sauce sampler pack. Let me go check it out. One moment. Uh, thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. A hot sauce, what is it? It's like a sampler pack. It was in the seasonal area at the Clackamas store. I don't know. It sounds pretty gay. Why don't you get something more manly? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm serious. You're 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 gaying up our store. <laughs> no, not a joke. Not something. Not. I'm not laughing with you. Right. Very very gay. Why don't you come in and buy an Xbox? Gay, gay, gay. All right, you can stop at the gay part. All right. What I have, what I'm calling. About. Maybe you can stop being gay, and I'll stop with the gay comments. All right, I, I'll, I'll let you talk to the girl again. Just a minute. All right, sauce. 
like uh, that jelly. Who's the gentleman I was just speaking with? Okay, looks like uh, all she left is a uh, jelly. It's a play pack. Okay. okay. Who is the gentleman that just picked up the phone? Um, I answered. Well, then there was a gentleman. You put the phone down, and then a gentleman picked up the phone. Hmm. Nope, I got the phone in my hand the whole time walking. Walked across the store with the phone in my hand. Well, somebody was talking to me in a very rather derogatory way, I guess. But, I mean, I was talking with the phone in my hand. Well, there was a gentleman that came on the line that was saying that I was gaying up the store by asking for hot sauce. You are being a <laughs> I was gaying up the store. Oh, my God. I don't know if somebody picked up a random phone or... Oh, you, you know what I think you did. So I'm walking with the phone in my hand, right? And I'm walking along, and the walkie's Whoa. hanging on my hip, right? Okay. So are you hearing something within that? I don't know. No, it was it was quite clean, clean, clean as you know. He was. I heard a phone pick up. I could hear you like talking when you were walking away. I heard like no comprende or something like that. And then the phone like jiggled. I heard somebody pick up. It was a gentleman talking, and he was extremely rude about it. And I was just like, wow. Uh uh. No, I had the phone down like as I was walking. It was swinging as I was walking. You probably heard me talk to a guest about a toy or something. No. No, I, I don't know what happened there. I don't, I don't know. That's pretty strange. Because you can't yeah. pick up, like, I can't pick up into this phone. Like, I can't pick up into this line. If I have it, it's, like, locked in. So, I don't know. Sorry about that. I don't know what exactly no. happened there, but. Alrighty. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Alright, thank you. Ma'am, can I help you? Uh, hi, yes. I'm wondering if you had any iPads left. I'm checking. Okay. All right, looks like two are left. We have a... Uh... Ma'am, I was helping her. You need to shut the fuck up. It looks like we have two left, ma'am. Okay, um, what, um, are they the 16 or the 32? Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, come on. Are you going to use up 16? Give me a break. You don't need hold 32. On, hold on, Ma'am, um, yeah? hang up and try again, okay? Somebody's tapped into our phone. I don't know what's going on, but... Um, I just had another complaint on this, okay? Hey, ma'am, you can okay, shut the fuck up. up. I'm trying to help this What's customer. Going on here? Ma'am, stop it. So even though I wasn't able to answer as many calls at Target as I could at Walmart, tricking Target into selling me an extension phone at their own store was definitely a lot cooler than just walking around the store picking up phone calls. And while sitting in my car eating junk food and waiting for calls to come in, I got to listen to store security trail customers and talk shit about them. Yeah, she's right around the pharmacy. VPN Tunnel Meridian PBX. 
I got old hunker down in some dark secluded phone booth just inside Grand Central Station with my tinfoil cowboy hat. Then all of a sudden these punk trench coat wearing motherfuckers on rollerblades come up out of nowhere. Shit, one bitch looked a little bit like Angelina Jolie. Had some tricked out laptops with 28.8 BPS modems running Risk OS. I'm about to shit my pants had it not been for the convenience of ripping some pages out of the phone book and clipping out my underoos. They kept telling me they were trying to be all elite and hack to Gibson because one of their homosexual friends, I guess, deleted the garbage file with a copy of the Da Vinci Code. I told them that movie sucked, but can't really remember the rest of what they said because uh, the mescaline lace cactus I smoked earlier kind of wore off. I guess after that I served the PLA forms. Hey, Brad. I'm fucking... Dude, I just want to get on the fucking PLA number 29. Last track met, dude. He's an inspiration for me. So fucking... I don't know. I'll call you back or something. Fuck. <laughs> Three o'clock this morning and I was on the phone and being really mean. Do, 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 I was pranking Dino up <laughs> I forgot about it because I was lazy. But even Dino's yelling <laughs> oh, old after a while. Are you recording me? What the fuck are you doing? The something zero but I don't know the lyrics. I'm a little bit tipsy. I'm calling up the Snowdrick Monday. I really think she's okay. Ah, Roy, this be Davy Jones. Give me the butt pirates. Call me back. This is the last message. If you'd like to leave a voicemail for PLA Radio, give us a call at 814-422-5309. A clear and simple prose. A couple of months ago, I began encouraging listeners to leave notes on random cars in their cities, stating that they'd accidentally dinged the person's car and to call me back. They would leave a Google Voice phone number of mine on the note, and I would get to talk to angry people who thought I'd damaged their car. Even though there was no actual damage, people still got pretty upset, as you'll hear in these next few calls. Hi, this is Roy. I left a note on your car, and I'm calling you back because of your message. Yeah, so uh, what, you dinged my car? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. What do you mean by sorry? Well, I'm apologizing. Wait, what's the problem with that? You ding my car and you're apologizing. Well, wh- what do you want me to do? You're you're getting. You, you, you're, it sounds like you're really angry for no reason at all. I'm just. I dinged your car and I was nice enough to leave a note. I don't see why you have to be a jerk about it. What do you ding my car with? With my car. With your car. Yes, my car dinged your car. You caught ding my car and you hit and run and you call me a, I'm a jerk? Well, I didn't hit and run. I, you just weren't around, so I left a note. That's proper car dinging etiquette. So that's a proper way to do Hit somebody's car and leave a note and then you can leave. Yes. Well, I had my kids with me. I couldn't just hang out there all day. My friend, that's a very expensive car, my friend. Really? What kind is it? Is it an What's that? Is it an Audi? You hit my Mercedes, my friend. Oh. It didn't look like a Mercedes. It's kind of... So be- what? It looked like a TM to you? I, I don't know. I, I I drive a Chevy. You drive a Chevy, you hit my car, and you say, leave my leave the note, it's okay. Yeah, well, I'm calling you back so we can make arrangements. Do you want me to give you my insurance information? My friend, my car is a $100,000 brand new. You hit that like that, and you run away, and you tell me... But I'm ca- I'm I'm calling back to give you insurance information. But with your attitude, I think I'm just not going to bother. I'm just going to hang up, and you'll never hear from me again. You just have to pay for it yourself. I'm pretty sure you can afford it since you drive a Mercedes. You hit me, and you tell me to fix it by myself. Yeah, could you just do that for me, please? Because you know you have more money than me. Clearly, so I, I think it'd be best if you just fix it yourself. That was a dumb. You live in Canada. That was you a... hit my car and you run. You leave a note. You're thinking it's okay. Expensive car. I can try. I can afford to pay it on my own. Yeah, uh, you can afford it, right? So I'll just let you go now. So, so, so my car, I can afford it. Yeah, your car can afford it, but mine can't. 
I think there was more damage to my car. So I'm, I think I, I'm going to need your insurance information to pay for the damage to my car. So could I have your insurance policy number? Are you fucking not in the head? Yes, sir. Um, I need your policy number right now. I've got a pen and a pink post-it. And I'm going to write it down. You hit somebody's car and you ask for the insurance to pay for your car? Yes. You Which... want to go to jail, this fucking guy? Which insurance company are you with, sir? Huh? I'm going to need your name, and which insurance company are you with? I'm going to fucking need your name. You know what you need my name if you think you hit my car. No, my name is Roy. I need your name and your insurance company's policy number. My friend, if you think you hit my car, you, I not... don't ask for insurance. You ask my insurance? Yeah, you I'm... fucking hit and run, my friend. I'm not your friend. I'm just some guy that hit your car. Can I have your policy number, please? I think you are something wrong. Wait for the cop to call you, okay? Bye. Hi. This is Jessica. Oh, hi. This is Roy. I left a note in your car. Hi, Roy. Hi. Yeah, I just want to know what happened. We weren't in this so long. <laughs> oh, I just walked by with a key and, like, scraped the side all up. Did zigzag lines. But then I felt bad, so I left the note. Well, well why did you do that? I, I'm just kind of a jerk, and I've been off my meds for a long time now. Okay. So, so you have insurance? Oh, no, I don't think insurance would even cover that. I mean, it's not like I was driving. I don't even own a car. So you were just walking around? Yeah, just walking around keying cars. But then I felt bad. I, I, you I don't know, understand. I, I just, I had a mood swing, and then I'm like, scribble, scribble, wrote a big note for you, and then I left. Actually, I ran away after I left the note. Did what? you leave a note on my car about hit, hitting a car? Yeah, well, what kind of car did you have? It was a gray metallic Honda Civic. You left a note saying that you hit it? But I don't see any damage. Where did you hit it? I might have hit it. I wasn't sure. I what do you mean to... you might have hit it? Because I'm going to report it to the police. you got to tell me what's going on. Well, okay. I, I, I smoked a spliff, right? So I don't yeah. really know if contact was made or not. Because, like, I was feeling vibrations. Did you put pylons around my car? I wanted to make sure nobody else hit it afterwards. I, like... I really cared. Like, I really am sorry. You? Where do you live? Do you live in Toronto? Yeah, man. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, I don't know where you hit it because that's what I need to determine. Well, I mean, I'm trying to tell you, man. I don't yeah. exactly remember, okay? I was high. You don't remember. I'm sorry? I was high. Okay, so you're driving under the influence and you hit a car that you're not sure if you hit about. Well, I think I did hit it, but I wanted to stay on the safe side. I got out. I wrote you a note. I put pylons, mm -hmm. I put pylons around your car so no one else would make the same mistake. And now you're fucking yelling at me like I did, like I murdered no, I'm your not baby. Yelling. No, I'm not yelling at you, but I'm just trying to get the information straight. Did you hit the car or not? Well, I think I felt a bump. A bump where? What's, what's like, the car I think I felt my body it? rise and fall. As I went into reverse. As you went into reverse. Um, I noticed that you haven't said thank you for the pylons. Okay, I need to double check my car and I'll call you back, okay? Because I don't All know right. where this damage is, so I'll call you back, okay? I love you. Thank you. Hi, Roy. Uh, yeah, um, I saw the note there. Uh, what, what exactly happened? I, I backed into it. I dented up the side and scratched the paint off and stuff. Oh, did, did you? I didn't even notice. Where, so where, where was it to on the on the side of it? No, yeah, kind of on the front. I had to get up under the engine and release the hood from inside, so I could get up and you know like uh, pull the dent out. I, I drilled a hole into it and I used one of those dent puller things and pulled the dent out. And then I had uh, patching material. And I, then I chipped off some extra paint to go color match your paint at the dealership. So it's a pretty good job. I don't think you can tell that I fixed it. But it's kind of—I think that's on the left side. Okay, okay, it's just kind of blowing my mind that you that you did all this in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, the window cracked too, and I use one of those windshield crack repair kits, and you can't even—I mean, it's there if you really look for it. I don't. This is kind of doesn't make much sense to me that all this happened in the parking lot. Like you were, 
Yeah, I had to reach up underneath with the coat hanger and release the hood. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know how you were able to release the hood without the alarm going off. Oh, I, um, I disabled I that. Di- what is that? I disabled that. It's you like, disabled my alarm? Just temporarily. I put it back. How did you disable my alarm? So, so what's going on with the car? Oh, well, we I, I work here at uh, Roy Gerbil's Automotive Services here in Orlando, and we just leave notes on cars like that for advertising purposes, and I wanted to offer you $10 off on your next oil change, and you just bring that note in and you get $10 off. Really? Yes. We, we also offer all kinds of services. We'll inspect your air conditioning and replace your air filter and check your battery. And you'll, you'll find so, that our, our prices are very competitive. Hmm. The first thing I would think is this is a really disreputable outfit. It's just it's the best they can do for advertising that they're going to try to put some false come on on a windshield. So I'd recommend you change your advertising technique and advertise well, you your don't, services you don't, you don't as opposed work. to some fraud that you're putting on somebody's windshield. It's not a fraud. You don't work here, so don't tell us how to run our job, you dumb Nazi. And even, okay. though, even though you're being a jerk about it, I'll still offer you the $10 off on an oil change. I got into an argument with my wife, and she was giving me a hard time because we bounced some checks. Okay? And I don't, I don't mean to get too personal about it, but I've been wasting money on lottery tickets, and I went to an Indian casino. So I got so angry that I started kicking your car. I kicked it a few times in the back. You're kicking my car? Well, I got really mad at your car, okay? So I kicked it. And that's, that's I just wanted to let you know that I kicked your car. I mean, you, okay. your, your car should not have been there, basically, is the way, the way it goes. Why was your car there right. in my way? Well, your car, you made me angry. You did, personally. I kicked your damn car. I made you angry? Yes. How did that make you angry? The way you parked. Excuse me? My car was parked in a parking spot. Yeah, exactly. A little too close. Too too far to you know to the side. And then me and my wife got into it. We started arguing. I said, she's like, I said, you know, be a damn shame if someone did something to this car. And then I opened my car door really fast. And it hit the, the car door. It, like, hit the side of your car. And it scratched it on the side there, like you saw. Uh-huh. And she said, oh, very nice, very, very good, Roy, very good. You're brilliant. And I said, yeah, you don't like that? And then I got out and I started kicking the car. And we you kept... realize my car, is an, my car is an Audi, right? Not a, not a cheap fucking car. I don't, uh, what's an Audi? What's that? I don't know a lot about cars. It's a very expensive car. It's an Audi. Those aren't expensive cars at all. No, they're not. It's not like it's a BMW. It's not like a BMW. It's, it's or a... more expensive than a BMW and a, and a Mercedes. Well, I, I, drive a, I drive a Toyota Celica. Yeah, so you drive a piece of shit. I drive an Audi. You're not going kicking other people's fucking cars. You have an obvious attitude problem. Look, the most important part is that I made up with my wife, okay? I don't give a fuck about you and your wife. I give a fuck about my car. That last call was by Carlito from the MadhouseLive.com prank call show. And before that, you heard Samantha, who actually left the note herself and then surrounded the guy's car with traffic cones. These calls were heavily edited so that they wouldn't take up as much space on this show. So if you want to hear the full versions of these calls, go to phonelosers.org slash D-I-N-G. If you'd like to leave some notes on cars in your own city, sign it with the name Roy and leave the phone number of 425-243-7565. Just please don't actually hit the car. That's going to do it for this episode of PLA Radio. Right now it is just approaching midnight on December 31st, 2011, and I'm sitting at an open window so you can hear the sounds of the new year in Albany, Oregon as the show ends, because somehow I feel that's relevant and people care. If you're wondering why there aren't as many PLA radio episodes anymore, it's mostly because I've spent a lot of my free time doing live shows on cactiradio.com this past year. Every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific, we do the phone show for at least an hour, so if you miss PLA Radio, try joining us there where we do basically the same thing every week. You can listen to the archives at cactiradio.com slash phone show. There are also live shows on most of the other weeknights by other hosts, such as Madhouse Live on Thursday nights, so tune in every night and you'll probably end up hearing some live shows. Don't forget to visit the PLA Radio MySpace page at myspace.com slash PLA Radio. If you'd like to contact the show, email us at pla1996 at hotmail.com and visit us on the World Wide Web at www 
www.geocities.com slash area 51 slash neptune slash 1654 slash home dot htm. Music in this episode has been provided by The Double Clicks and Rappy McRapperson. Visit them at thedoubleclicks.com and rappymcrapperson.com or just find them on lycos.com. Have a great 2012, everyone. I think you are something wrong.